Good morning. Thank you all for being on this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead. Do like and share, like and share for me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I know it's Monday. I'm excited about Monday. I was listening to the God Zone this morning and I heard Avril say TGIM. We normally say TGIF, but yeah, it's time for us to say thank God for every day. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Lynn. Good morning, love. Hi, Michonne. Hey, Browder. Hey, Avril. Good morning, Rutho. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Excited, excited, excited about today and what's going to happen today. What's in store for us today? New day. Good morning, Ladybug. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so grateful and thankful that we made it back. Um, yesterday, we had a great time. We were able to stop in Orlando. I was able to see my best friend. So it was a great time fellowshipping with my family. Good morning, Yolanda. Good morning. Good morning. That's right. TGIM. Good morning. Good morning. It is Monday. Guys, um, I'm going to start by saying if you are not getting on the God Zone in the morning to get your day jump started, you are missing out. Ruth or Avril, would you please drop it in the comments right there so that they can see the information? I know I post it in the morning, but I want everybody to have the opportunity that I have because you're wondering like why she's super excited at this hour in the morning because I was up already super excited, praying and worshiping, excited, getting my day going. I'm just being blessed by the God zone this morning. That's why. Good morning, Centrale. Good morning, Juanita. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Thank you guys for being on. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, Roseanne. Can't wait to see you. Hey, 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 hey. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, so I know you're looking and you're like, she's not in Miami anymore. I'm not, I'm back home. I know you see the well and you're like, okay, here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, Michael Powell. How you doing? Praise God. Thank you for being here. Good morning, Charlotte. Yes, God's on was on fire. I know, I know. I can't go wait to go back and listen to the whole message again. I was on for prayer and I heard the beginning of Avril and then I started immersing in my word, but I cannot wait. So understand, guys, um, with God's on, what I need to tell you, because I have to put this plug, is we have a whole WhatsApp group. So you can be a part of that as well. And with the WhatsApp group throughout the day, we don't stop. Like we're praying for each other, with each other all day. So I just want to put that out there. So don't count me out. I know you're saying, okay, that's right. People are always counting me out. You know, it's what, what's going on? No, no. So this morning, I've already um, had my morning prayer and I know he's going to use me because I'm like, take all of me out so that they can hear everything we need to hear. So this morning, guys, my meditation, and I just grabbed my Bible right here. Um, I put my glasses on so I should be able to see. This morning, my meditation was in um, John 4, 1 through 29, and we know it as um, Jesus and the woman at the well. So as I was sitting and I'm like, okay, Lord, uh, what we doing this morning? You know, how am I going to use this thing? And, you know, Jesus led his disciples to Samaria. And uh, we know the story as they got close. He said he was super hungry. And as they got closer, you know, he told them, I'm just going to sit right here by this well. You all go ahead and, and go get some meat. You go get the food. And they were confused because they were like, I thought you were starving. Like, don't you want to go? And he was like, I'm going to just sit here. Y'all go and then come back. Now, what we have to understand is when he sat by the well, he didn't have a bucket to pull water up. It's 12 o'clock noon. It's high noon. So back in those days, nobody is coming to the well at that time. So in your mind, you would be like, why are you going to sit here? You might as well come with us so we can get water where we're going. We can get food where we're going. But you know what? Jesus had a date. And I know you're probably like, he had a date at high noon. He had a date at high noon because he was waiting on this woman. He was not there by chance. Nothing he does is unintentional. He is very targeted, specific, and intentional about what he's doing. You know, so the, the funny thing about this is I was reading the scripture. It just calls her the woman of Samaria in my Bible. She doesn't have a name. It's not that, oh, it was mary it was um this person or that person so we can insert whatever name we want to we can insert trina in there we can insert deborah in there we can insert Santrell in there we can insert avril in there we can insert lisa um lynn princess we can insert whatever woman's name we need to or even man's name that we need to because she was at that well he knew she was coming 
And when I saw it this morning, I was reading it. I'm like, I know the story, but I got all excited again. Now, a little backdrop I want us to understand about Samaritans. Samaritans were part Jew and part Gentile, and they were not liked by either. So just the fact that Jesus is at the well, here comes this Samaritan woman, and now here comes, a, here comes this dialogue that they began to have. Now, also backdrop on the woman, and this is where y'all know I'm in the process of this book, and I'm thinking, Lord, you're exposing me again today. This woman had been married five times. No, I ain't been married five times, but I've been married before. She was married five times, and she was currently living with her boo. She was living with her man in sin. So that's why at noon, in the heat of the day, Jesus knew somebody was coming. He knew she was coming because she was trying to be discreet. She wanted to avoid anybody she could because she was already living in shame. So I don't know what shame or what, what it is that you're ashamed of. What, what are you living in? Why are you trying to, you know, manipulate and go behind the back doors because you feel like people count you out? And I'm going to tell you today, don't count me out. We're not going to be counted out today. We're supposed to be where we are. Now, what I loved about the story is Jesus revealed himself three different times to this lady in the process of them having a conversation because he asked her to get him some water. You know, she's looking at him like, what? And he said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Interest peak, because she's looking like, you don't got no bucket. How you gonna give me anything? How can, because that's how our minds think. We don't, we're, we're looking at the messenger instead of thinking about the message instead of receiving it you know who are you asking for water who are you asking to pour into you and we're wondering why we keep getting thirsty because you're going to the wrong source because he is saying he is the source and she's looking all the way around the second thing he said to her was that he called he identified himself as a prophet he told her go get your husband now of course he know she was living with her boo. She wasn't living with no husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. He said, you right. You have been married five times and the one who you living with now, he's not your husband, exposed. But guess what? When he said that, I was when I was reading it, I was like, oh, ooh, I got super excited all over again because I'm like, you know what? Broken crayon still color. You know what? It doesn't matter what we've done because he can still use you. You know what? It, it doesn't matter what people say because I can still be used for his purpose. It doesn't matter how many times she was divorced. It doesn't matter how many kids she had out of wedlock. It doesn't matter how many times he failed. It doesn't matter how many times somebody's been locked up. He can still use us. It does not matter. Our past does not matter. He sees it all. Yes, he did. He called her right out. And that thing kind of hit her and he needed to call her out just like he called many of us out. I was sitting there like, oh Lord, here I go. Here you go again. Stop doing it to me. Stop shining that light on me. I'm sitting here like in my office this morning, like what's going on? The third thing was he, uh, she identified and he identified himself as the Messiah. And she began, it started clicking with her. She says, I know the Messiah is coming and he will tell us all things. And Jesus said, I, who you speak to am he drop the mic right then and there i was like okay now we having that real conversation because he's identified himself she's having this conversation he exposed her he exposed himself to her he told her who he was and I, at that point i'm like don't count me out lord don't count me out if you can use her i know you can use me don't count me out any of us it's some of us that's holding on to things and we're like i don't want to do it because you know they knew me when so what he is not counting us out. He wants us to have everything we're supposed to have. He's waiting on us to identify that he is our portion. And, you know, as I was sitting there thinking about it and reading, and I'm like, Lord, I can relate to this woman at the well. I can relate. You know, some of us might not say it, but more of us are relating to her than not. How many of us are ashamed about what we, who we were, what we've been, what we've been doing, how we're currently living but the beauty of it all is he knows it all and he's still running after us every day. I'm sitting here, I'm like, Lord, you're exposing me again. I'm writing a book. The book is being edited. Lord, why are you doing this? He wants us to know that he is not interested in taking from us like people are taking from us. He wants us to know that we can come to him and be vulnerable, open, and transparent. He is seeking to pour into us. So whatever we've been through, whatever those relationships in the past have been, male, female, whatever it is, however we've been hurt at work, however we've been hurt by somebody promising that they were going to do a thing, 
He is saying it doesn't matter. Come to me. He is the living water. He is going to give perpetual satisfaction, refreshing our deepest needs. Do you know what it is to have your deepest needs met without owing anybody, without having to say, well, if they, if they do this for me, I'm going to have to do something. No, all we have to do is be obedient. All we have to do is love him and he's going to love us. Guys, understand, as I was sitting here, I'm writing my notes, I'm going, I'm like, my, my little iPad pen is going faster than, um, my mind's going faster than my pen can write. I'm like, you know what? He's not phased by our sins, not yours, not mine. It, it doesn't matter. So when I look at Romans 3 and 23, 3 and 23, I'm like, you know what? You're right. It doesn't matter. He's not holding anything against me. So how can I let man or woman be judge, jury, and executioner over my life? I'm, I, in that moment, I said, you know what, Lord? They can't count me out because everything that you have for me, I want it. Everything that you need for me to do, I want to do it. I want to be obedient. I'm like, he is our savior. He's going to give us the desires of our heart and new purpose, new desires. So you know what? It doesn't matter about flesh and what they said. We don't have to be the next best thing because we got the greatest thing. So it's not about us being, okay, well, we got to, I have to refresh it. I have to make it look different. I have to make, I have to add something new, a different twist to it. No, you don't. We got the best thing. He used a woman and understand. So, so let's give some backdrop. Back in this time, a woman, you weren't going, women were not as valued as men. So for a woman to be able to be a testimony about what she had seen was a huge deal. And this woman, especially who had been married five times, like she's going to the well in the height of the day when it's hot because she did not want people to see her. So she went out and she, on any other circumstance, we would say she wasn't a person who was qualified, but she was able to go out and tell men, she, were able to, she was able to go out and bring people back like, hey, you need to come and see this person. And through her testimony, through her being able to say, you know what, he called me out and, and in spite of, he still wants to use me. He still can use me. So, you know, if, it, if he can use her, he can use me because, you know, we're always comparing our sin to somebody else or our situation to somebody else and we can't because it doesn't matter. Based on that lady or that woman, so many Samaritans believe because of her testimony, because Jesus showed himself to be a prophet. Like, yeah, I know you've been married five times. Yeah, I know you have all those kids. Yeah, I know you've been dealing with Tom, Dick, and Harry. Yeah, I know you got Lisa, um, Keisha, and Mary over here. Yeah, I know that you're not writing your business dealings. Yeah, I know that you haven't been doing the things you're supposed to do, but I still am seeking you. I'm coming for you every day. I'm like, Lord, don't count me out then. If you're going to use all of them, don't count me out. I know I'm not perfect. So guess what? You are not going to be counted out either. If he can use me, understand. He can use you. It gets better. Guys, as I was thinking about this thing this morning, I was like, Lord, the relationship, the relationship, the alignment, the relationship. My husband and I were talking um, over the weekend and um, we were saying something about acknowledgement and he was like, um, he loves it when I tell him um, how good he does a certain thing because it's not about tangible gifts for him. It's just the fact that I am I'm pleasing. I'm pleased by whatever it is that he does. And in that conversation, I was like, baby, I like acknowledgement too. And I was just thinking acknowledgement equals relationship. So understand when Jesus started talking to this woman, he acknowledged her. He gave her relationship. He saw her. He let her know that despite whatever, it didn't matter. So where she was now, she, before she was trying to go around people when it was, you know, times that nobody else would be there. Now she's running to him to tell him about the Messiah, the man that she met. So how many of us are running? How many of us are running from? I heard Avril this morning on the um, God Zone. She talked about that message from last Wednesday. When the gun goes off, what are you doing? We're in the second half of the year. Are you running from a thing or are you running to a thing? We need to be running to it. We need to be running to people. We need to be sharing what we have. Don't try to hold it in. That's why every time we get on here in the morning, I said, like and share, like and share, like and share. Because it's not, yeah, we want to get our day going, but we want to help somebody else get their, their day going. That's why I'm constantly talking about the God zone, because I know what it's doing for me. And if it can do it for me, I know it'll do it for you. Get with some of these small groups, guys. Get on your knees. I'm telling you, that's how I go to battle. I'm okay with laying on my face and calling him out and saying, Lord, you said 
that these were the things that this is how you're going to use me. And sometimes I just say, if you don't do nothing else, I'm grateful and I'm thankful. So we have to make sure that we're not counted out. He ain't counting you out. Understand, if he can use her, if he can use him, if he can use them, if he can use me, he can use you. So this morning, I'm not going to say, don't count me out. Don't count us out because we are in the number. He wants to use us and we can be used. It does not matter what we've been through. It doesn't matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter who's checking the list and say, dog, she did this. A dog that she lives here. She did that. They messed up the credit. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. They had all these kids. It doesn't matter. Don't count me out. Because guess what? He has that water that is going to refresh me. He has the living water that gives me new purpose, new desire, so I don't have to worry about it. I know that I, I don't have to lean on other people. I don't have to lean on man because flesh can't do it. Man can't do it. Man can't give me that thirst where I'm going to jump up every morning running because guess what? I don't want him to count me out. I want to be ready each and every day. And family, with that being said, that's what I have for you on this awesome Motivation Monday. I pray that you could take this energy and you could take it through the rest of your day and go back and read, read the um, scripture. This again was John 4, 1 through 29. You know, every time I listen to a sermon, every time I listen to somebody bring a message or I listen to um, YouTube a lot of times, we all have a different perspective and a different twist on what we hear. See what it says to you from your own reading, not just from what I say, not just what it said to me. Go back and take a look at it. It doesn't take a long time. If you're in your car, put it on um, the Bible app and just listen to it. I listen, my car is like a whole university. I listen to books. I listen to sermons. I listen to messages. I do everything audible in my car. I don't even know how to access the radio in my car. I know that's pretty bad. I don't. If it's not coming through my phone or my device, I don't know how to use it. But hey, don't count me out because I'm not counting you out. Guys, I love you this morning. Have a fantastic Motivation Monday. And I look forward to seeing you on Wisdom Wednesday. I got a treat for y'all. Have a good day. Bye-bye.